What's up guys? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can use an Airtable form that maybe you didn't want that linked record in there and you still want it to link but you want to hide that in the form. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. It's going to use a really easy to use Airtable automation, just plug and play. And so stick around for that. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we help business owners probably just like you help them optimize their information systems. So stuff like Airtable, Asana, Slack, we have them set all of, all of their systems up. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. And without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. All right, so here on the screen, I have the sales CRM up and I often do tutorials in this space because it gives you a lot of real world like applications to this. So for this example, what you don't wanna be exposing with a linked record is your client contacts, all of your contacts in your entire organization. So. This is a problem that I've encountered many times with many of my clients, and this is a really easy walk around of that issue. And it uses a very, as I said, a very simple, easy to use Airtable automation. And this video will show you how to do the whole process from start to finish. So for this example, I'm going to, the one thing I am going to assume, I'm going to assume you already have your form set up. So you have what you want to do with your form. So you have your form and it's going to input into a database like this. So this is going to be like a request for our sales CRM. So maybe someone we, they've already hired us or whatever, but we don't want to be able to allow them to pick like any of our other clients. We just want them to have theirs. So this is exactly how you're going to do it. So you're going to set up your form in a table like this. And as you can see, you can have as many of these input variables as you want. So for us, we're really only going to have two. It's going to be a very simple form just for the tutorial. Normally it's a lot more elaborate than this, but if we come over here, we can see it's a request form. And if we scroll down, we can see all they need to input is a contact name and a request. So you might have a lot more questions than this, but what you don't want to have is they can come in here, they can pick from any of these. And that's like lots of people's worst nightmare. They don't want to expose all of their other clients. You probably have a lot of NDAs, a lot of legal documents. So this will be a great workaround for that. So what you want to do is you want to come back over here into your field here. And this is just a little bit of database design that often like it can help you out a lot in while you're building this. So some people, they want to have like the name of it in the first column. And that's where you want the linked record. You can't have a linked record in that first column. So I always try to make that first column. It's the primary field that needs to be unique. I like to have that as a formula and it's, this one's a concatenate formula and it concatenates the name of the contact. So this right here, and it also, or actually it's referencing this field and it also has the date that it was submitted. So that's just a easy, like create date and created time. You can create that really easy and just do it that way. So, that's all that is, but what I want to show you is when they fill out this form, they're not going to be able to pick this. So how does that happen? So when they fill out this form, we'll go back to the form and we'll, we'll remove that field. So if we remove this field, so we click this right here, remove that. What you want to have, it's going to create a little bit of redundancy, but it's going to protect your user data. So what you want to have is you want to have this contact's name. This is going to be where they input this exact name here. And they're going to do this a very tricky way. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. So this is just an example submission, but once you have this form, what they'll do is they'll come in here and they'll submit this request. Now I'm going to show you what this form looks like on a web page. So I will bring this over and once this loads, this is what they'll see. So they'll see contact name and request. Now for us, they might be able to enter. You might be like, well, that's like, they're not going to know exactly what to enter. Like maybe they, our bear paw solution. So bear paw solution. So that's theirs. And then their request is I want more hours. So then they submit that and it comes right into our database. So now we can see this here. If we go back to our database, obviously that didn't work. That didn't link up. So now what do you have to do? A while ago, I made a video on creating a pre-filled form and you can do this very easily using that video. But what I want to show you here is how to use this in a form to link a record. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the form link and you're going to share this form. Now you're just going to take this form link and you're going to copy it. So I just press command C there, command C there. And then if I come back to the grid view and I hide this, that's all you'll need. And then what you're going to do is wherever you're trying to link this to, 
you're gonna go to that table. So we want to be linking in the contacts table. And this is actually perfect because maybe you're sending out a form to all of your contacts, or maybe you're sending out a form specifically to contacts that you just like had a consultation with. And you wanna get maybe some of their feedback or whatever that looks like, and you want it to automatically sync up to their record. So here's what you're gonna do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, and you can add this all the way at the end of your database and hide it if you want to, but you're gonna insert a field to the right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna create this formula and you're gonna use concatenate. So concatenate is just a formula and it'll pull together different text strings. So the first text string you're gonna have is the URL. So when you put, the, you put a quote, so after you type in concatenate, you bring in concatenate, you put a quote, and then you paste your URL and then you put another quote. So that's what's called the first operator in your, in your text string. Now to enter more operators because you want to add the rest of the formula to pre-fill it, all you have to do is enter another comma. And now what you wanna do is you wanna put a qu another quote and you wanna put question mark underscore pre-fill or you just wanna put question mark pre-fill and then an underscore and then you want to put another quote and then put another comma. So that's another operator. So you have your URL, that's the first operator, comma, your second operator, and the commas are called separators, but you'll have your first one, which is the URL, the second one, which is question mark, prefill, underscore, and then uh, that all needs to be in quotes so that Airtable knows it's a text string. Then you want another comma. And now you're gonna use a formula, and this formula is gonna be encode URL component. So you'll use this encode URL com component. And right here, it's asking you what you want to prefill. So you want to prefill name and organization. So, and actually what you want here is you want to add a field in here. So I'm just gonna type a simple letter in there and I'm gonna create that. Actually, I will take that out so that we can go back and I'll show you what you need to grab from that form. So this is asking what field in the form you want to be you want to be prefilling. So you want to come back to your form, you want to go to the request, and you just want to know what this says right here. So contact name. So there's going to be a few ways you can do this, and I'll show you an easy way and a hard way if you want to like learn a little bit more about URLs. So now for back in our contacts table, we can customize this again, and we come right in here after that prefill. And so there's two ways of doing this. You can use the encode URL component, and you can type in contact name. And then you can press enter, so save. Oh, maybe we need to put in quote there and quote there. Oh, so now we can click save there. So we forgot our comma here. Now we can click save and now we'll see what this looks like. So as you can see, once you use that encode URL formula function, it's gonna put this percent 20 in here. So if you want to avoid that, what you can do instead of putting encode URL component, you can just put contact, you want to put this in quotes, but contact percent 20. And what percent 20 tells to like Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever, it's going to tell them that that's the, that's a space in there. So you want to put contact name. So then you can just end that quote. And actually before you do that, you'll just put an equal sign. So that equal sign is going to say this contact name is going to equal this text string. And so now this text string, is going to be another comma and you're just going to use that formula again because you're never going to know exactly where the spaces are unless it's incredibly standard which i wouldn't recommend not using this so you're just going to put this encode url component in here and then you're going to type in name and organization so now what that's going to do is it's going to create a unique a unique formula here for everyone and if we expand this out here we can see it says contact name is Olivia, percent 20 Burton, and this is what you what we want it to prefit with. So now we'll click on this and we'll see what it says. It should work. So yeah, so Olivia Burton, Owl Limited, and we can see that's exactly what it says there. So we'll say that's our request and our request is, we'll just put request, it's not even required, but we'll just put that. So now once we submit that, if we come back in here to our request table, you might be like, well, Ben, that's perfect, but it's still not linked up and that's okay. Here's what you're gonna do now. So the idea with this is when you're sending out this form, it's going to have this in here. So when you want to do that email automation, you want to, if you wanna send it to everybody, 
you can use something like SunGrid and Airtable, or you can just use the native integration with Gmail if you have like a pro plan or just Airtable, Mail, their automation. And you can send this to, to their email. You can send this record right here so that they get their personalized link and then they'll fill that out. And if I were to click this link, say I was Judith and I had just gotten this, when I click on this, it won't, like I'm not gonna go change that. Like I know that's my contact name and I can just leave that as is. I'm not gonna go change it. And then for the request, we'll say it's just request again. So most people, they're not just gonna go change that. They'll just leave it as is. It'll be less work for them, less headache, and they'll, might, they'll probably be very appreciative that you've pre-filled their name for them. So now you can just click submit again. You don't need that. So now here's the, the most important part is right here. So we're gonna have a lot of automations already in here, but what you're just gonna do is you're gonna come create a new automation. And for this automation, we're gonna do autofill. And this is gonna be literally autofill. It's gonna autofill that linked record. So the trigger is going to be when record matches conditions. And the table is going to be the request table. And the condition is just going to be making sure that that form was filled out. So you might wanna make sure that like certain fields are required. That way you know it's somebody filling out the form. And you probably wouldn't use this table for any other reason unless somebody was filling out this form anyways. So we're gonna say when a few of these records are empty. So when the, so this one's always going to be there because it's a formula, it's always going to pull in at least that created date if you have a record. So we want to make sure that the contact name is not empty. We want to add another condition that says the request is not empty. So in your form, just pick whichever fields you know they're required when they submit that and that's all you'll need. So we'll just run this test because I know there's some of those in there. So it'll pull in that sample data and now we can click done. So you've done half the automation now if you've been following along to this point. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create one of these actions. And so for this action, you're just gonna come right here and update the record. And the trick here is you're gonna be updating that same record. Basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking what they inputted. So they can't see anything in the linked record, but you can. So if you take what they put in the linked record, which is exactly matches the primary field of that database of that different, I believe it was the contacts table, then it's gonna put that primary field right in here. So it's gonna be real perfect for you. So for the record ID, you're gonna be updating the same record. So for record ID, you'll just put record ID, what you already have in here. So I guess before you click record ID, I missed this step, you'll wanna click the request table. So you, so you want to automatically link this. So now after you input the record ID of that first, that record that you have from this first trigger right here, you can click the fields. So the only field you'll need to update here is that linked record. So if we click add field, we'll pick the one that's a linked field. So contacts is linked. And the only thing we'll need to link in here is if we click plus, we can just put exactly what they put in their submission. And that's exactly what was in our contacts sheet in that primary field. So now we can just insert the contact name in here and we can run this test. We're not gonna be able to see it here, but if we click done, and now we click this on, that's gonna be perfect. That's gonna be exactly what we need. So now I'll go show you if I go fill out one of these forms. So if I go to the contacts table and I open up Victoria Porter and real quick, I'm gonna come back here to the request table so we can see it in real time. But if I type in request, so we'll just put another letter in there, submit that. So I added that there and then I automatically linked it up. Now, if we go to the contacts table, it didn't just make a new one. If we come in here and expand this and we go all the way to the bottom, we can see that there's that linked record right there for the request table. So that's how you do it. I know it's a little bit of a long process, but once you set it up, it'll be kind of a one, one and done type thing. You can also set this up for yourself if you want to just be able to click a link and automatically have that form submit to their profile. You can sort of set up some internal documentation, whether it's like on your calls with them or whatever that is this can be really useful for you. So if you really enjoyed this automation tutorial, probably really enjoyed this automation tutorial, right? I think it's right here. It'll be how to run an automated checklist in Airtable. It's gonna be just as valuable as this one. So go check out how to run an automated checklist with Airtable. If you're interested in Airtable consulting, there's that link in the description, but I highly encourage you to go learn how to run a checklist with Airtable automations. It'll probably save you 10 times, just as much time as this, this will save you. So I highly encourage you to check that out. And without further ado, Go check that out and have a great day.